Welcome to episode three of our trip to Creature Feature 2023 in Gettysburg. This is where it was at. Um, we had one of the best times ever. And uh, in this episode, we get to talk with some awesome, awesome people. And uh, yeah, do you want to set this up? Sure. So we got the honor and privilege of talking with Grant Kramer. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was actually, you actually had the... The task of interviewing Grant. Yeah, uh, I was a little nervous. It's so funny because I watched Killer Clowns since I was a little kid. So I watched Grant on my television screen over a million times as a kid, gr like looking up to him and stuff and just thinking he was the coolest character. And so um, to interview him, I was like a little starstruck, mm -hmm. uh, which is funny. And uh, <laughs> you could probably see it a little bit. And the gleam in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but he was so cool. He was so awesome. And he got to tell us all these really cool stories. Uh, not only about, you know, like Killer Clowns and, and the life it took after, you know. But uh, also, like, what he's up to now. Like, all the stuff he's doing behind the scenes, actually. Yeah, and we had a similar experience. I got a chance to interview Suzanne Snyder, who really was... Uh, awesome she was so nice and you know i learned a lot of things in that interview too about different films that she had and yeah um, especially one that i guess was discovered during the pandemic and yeah and so yeah of... let's get right into this first interview with grant kramer hi i'm ej leeson with fourth cut productions right now i'm sitting here with grant kramer from killer clowns from outer space um so grant we have a few questions by the way i love the commentary from the other night oh sweet sweet yeah i think that was the first commentary like that we've ever done so i had no idea i mean i showed up and i thought it was just going to be a panel and i thought the movie was already over <laughs> and i was like how come the seats are turned the wrong way like we're turned towards this and like, oh, yeah, this is a commentary. The movie's right or so. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought that was awesome. And it, it was just very insightful because there was like so many. I watched this movie a million times as a kid. Like, I, I was obsessed with it. My mom's like, I don't get it. These things are terrifying looking. But I loved it. Um, and they were pointing out stuff that I was like, I never realized there was a person in the doorway before, like the prop master, <laughs> which I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, and, there, and all this stuff, like the Three Stooges, I was like, oh my God, I love it. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, look, some of it was kind of interesting for me too, because having the commentary, I heard the Kyoto's telling, saying stuff that I don't even remember ever hearing before, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think Suzanne and I were just, you know, kind of trying to provide some comic relief and they were giving most of the informative stuff. Yeah, no, I enjoy that comic relief. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question, Grant, how does it feel to be part of such a cult classic like Killer Clowns from Outer Space? You know, um, it's it's awesome. It's fun. It's awesome. Uh, you know, just to, to know that uh, something that we were part of has you know affected so many people over such a long period of time and now like multiple generations yeah i, I mean literally we're kind of in the grand you know, the you know the grandkids thing where it's been passed down for like three generations now yeah, yeah. and that's uh it's pretty cool you know what i mean it's unexpected and it's wild and it's cool and yeah. it's uh, kind of created a little separate a little separate, uh, I don't know, you know, you call it a side hustle, but it's almost like a little separate family, a little separate world that we have. You know, a few times a year we cop in an airplane and travel to the, with the gang, and, <laughs> and it's just neat to see that there's so many people and, a gr and, and getting a bigger group all the time that just yeah. digs on this movie and, yeah. and uh, loves it, and the, the merch and the albums and the video game coming out, it's just wild. Yeah, it's so cool because at Spirit Halloween this year, they released all this stuff, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to buy all of it. Well, I even bought the shorty. Funny, 
I, I, uh, I, I actually, we went to Spirit of Halloween. I took my seven-year-old kid who's got a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. And we were trying to figure out some Halloween stuff for him to do. And, and uh, I, I know the people that when they've come to get their stuff signed, they always go, oh, yeah, I got this at Spirit of Halloween. But I'd never even been there before. I said, oh, let's go to Spirit of Halloween. <laughs> yeah. And I was, like, blown away because... I, I like walked in there. There's like a whole killer clown section. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. With like the, the the animatronics and the shorty and the this and that. And I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. I, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> we throw like a ho big Halloween party, so I was like, oh. And so this year's theme was all killer clowns. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um. So my next question. Now you're producing movies like Willy Wonderland, War with Grandpa, Lone Survivor. How do you enjoy producing? You know, I enjoy it a lot. You know, look, there's a certain point in time, you know, when you're acting, you're always waiting for somebody to give you a job. Yeah. I mean, and not that when you're producing, you're not, it doesn't take a long time to get a job, a, a project off the ground. Yeah. But at least you have something that every day when you wake up, you've got some, you've got a, a ball to be rolling up the hill that's kind of consistent to try to get things made. Yeah. So, um, and there's a certain satisfaction, uh, you know, to, there's a lot of hurting cats, but there's a certain satisfaction when it all comes together. Yeah, um, I, I loved Willie's Wonderland. I loved oh, your, your cameo as Willie too. Yeah, thank which you. Was awesome. That's like I didn't recognize you at first because uh, obviously I watched this movie, so I was. Well, it's kind of an Easter egg, you know. You yeah. kind of you kind of have to know what you're looking for a little bit, but it's kind of fun. Yeah, because uh, the long longer hair and stuff, you know. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was like. I had to like <laughs> rewind it and go like. But um, so I loved your cameo. Um, I know acting is a part of your family lineage, being your mother is Oscar nominated Terry Moore um, but what got you into acting was it like did she inspire you or was it something you just had that you know it was kind of a weird thing because obviously I'd grown up around it and I'd been on movie sets my whole life and stuff because of my mom but I never really was that interested in it and I, I think I was in senior in high school and I was waiting tables at this restaurant and um, somebody came up to me and said are you an actor and I said no and they said well would, you're perfect for this part in this movie would you do it and I said, uh, well, you know, immediately my life, you know, kind of spider senses went, <laughs> um, you know, who knows, maybe this is some sort of a weird dude that wants to get me uh, yeah, in a like... snuff film or something. And, <laughs> and uh, so uh, the, guy, the guy came over to my house and met with my parents and he seemed fairly legit. And so I started taking an acting class just thinking, oh, well, okay, well, I'm going to act in this movie, but I'll learn everything there is in the next six months about acting. And, <laughs> yeah. and meanwhile, they, they kept delaying that movie. It never happened, right? It just kept yeah. on getting, the can kept on getting kicked down the road, but I, I kind of got bit by the bug. I got really interested in acting, and I kept on doing it. And, the, you know, a year or so later, I was out of school, and I was going to UCLA, and I was... I was studying economics, yeah. but I was ta still taking acting classes on the side. Yeah. And then um, my first job I ever got, I think I was 17, and I got uh, the part in New Year's Evil. Yep. Yeah. And um, you know, by that time the bug had kind of bit me, and uh, I was I was into it, and I kept doing it, and pretty soon I was getting more and more work, and uh, the rest was history, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's so funny because they brought up a good point. Um, you have to deliver like this really uh, convincing, there's killer clowns in this tent, you know, up, and so you're at the police station and you you have to like deliver it, and you're so good, like it's so believable, and you're so passionate when you're like talking, you know what I mean, and it's so cool to watch, I, yeah, you're amazing. Well, you know, that was the trick of it all, and it's, it's just awesome to to uh, you know it's it's it, it makes me feel good when people come up and say that I that you kind of nailed it because um, you know I wanted to, at the time I was studying to be to be an actor and, and 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 in this movie it was pushing it was they were pushing us to be a little bit over the top right to be right. like bigger than life almost like those old those 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 actors in those 50s movies with the aliens from outer space but I wanted to still be as real as I could possibly be, which just yeah. meant you had to just, you had to crank up the emotion like yeah. that much more and make it that much more real. So instead of kind of just goofing it off like, oh, you know, you had to actually make it that it was that much more real. They're really coming. And yeah. so, like Joe Lombardo, you know, I like love it. It's, um, so what is your favorite memory of, uh, from Killer Clowns? Wow, I don't know. There was a lot of, there's a lot of good, uh, 
a lot of good crazy memories. I'm trying to think of um, if there was any one particular one. You know, like shooting the movie, I guess we, Suzanne and I both really liked, uh, when we, we, we were watching the fun house getting built the whole time while we were shooting the rest of the movie. That was like the last thing we shot. And um, so that was kind of cool. We finally like were inside and we, we got to be in the ball pit and all those fun things. Yeah. Um, the amusement park was kind of fun when we all got to go. Basically, when the when the when the security guard gets melted with the pies, yeah, that was like all the actors and all the crew members. We all had a pie standing behind the camera, and it was like one, two, three, throw. <laughs> yeah. oh my so God. that was really fun, and uh, you know, just but the whole thing was just kind of a gas. It was it was a crazy shoot, and yeah, and um, we had a lot of fun, and um, I've, I'm sure if I sat and thought about it, I think of a lot of a lot of really fun memories. Yeah, but those and, are the ones that come to mind. And um, my final question, uh, if you can't think of one, you could come up with three, but what is your favorite horror film? You know, my favorite horror films are kind of like, you know, I love like Evil Dead 2 in terms of kind of comedic yeah, type too. of stuff, yeah. you know, just like really just fun, zany stuff. But then I love, I love like the really, I've never been like a big slasher, you know, yeah. uh, but I love like supernatural stuff. Yeah. So I would say, you know, top of the list, there's got to be like The Exorcist and The Omen. Yeah. And like just like, like creepy ghosts and demons and conjuring. conjuring. Yeah. Conjuring. yeah. Um, I'm trying to. There was a there was a movie when I was growing up. I don't know. You never. I never hear anybody talking about it. But it was called The Other. The uh, it was. Um, it was basically two brothers, and I remember um, the famous acting teacher, um, uh, what was her name, uh, oh, um, Uta Hagen was in it playing like the old woman, but it's two brothers and they're killing people, and they're twins, Yeah. And, um, and, uh, but you, f you find out that one of them's dead and he thinks, the other, he thinks the one twin thinks the other one's making him do all these things, killing people, and one of them can go with the bird and he can go flying and see around and kind of sh shape shift with the bird. It was, it was really cool. That was kind of my first horror movie that really got me sucked in. Yeah. And yeah. it's still like probably like my favorite horror movie. I, I need to go watch it again because I, I think about it still all the time, right? Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, I would say like Killer Clowns was my first like foray yeah. into horror, and then I, I did open this door to like loving everything horror, you know. But um, you know, that's why I made Willies. Is I want like I I kind of felt like there wasn't a lot of movies that were like Killer Clowns, where, like yeah. played like absurd but played really serious. So that's what we were, what I was going for when I pitched Willies. I pitched it because uh, uh, I produced Willies as well. So when I was raising the money, I pitched it as Pale Rider meets Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> yeah. And now, being like the stranger from out of town, you know, that, that with no name that comes in and barely speaks or doesn't yeah, speak at all. And, yeah. and nobody, you know, everybody's, you know, basically the, the log line was, you know, was uh, they, they, he's not trapped in there with them. They're trapped in there with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. So talking about that, did you meet uh, Nicolas Cage while you were doing On Frozen Ground, like uh, with your production company and stuff? I did, but ironically, I didn't. I never really met Nick during that because we. I had several projects that were going on, and I had to be, you know, I, I helped put the whole project together, yeah. but I never went up to Alaska because I had a couple other projects that were close to going off the ground, so... Yeah. I never went up there, so I really wanted to, but yeah. I didn't. Um, and I was seeing film on it all the time, so I never really did. But I was, but, but I was kind of the main hands-on producer on Willys. Yeah. So I really kind of met him the, a couple of days before we started shooting. When he showed up, to, you know, to the set in Georgia, and yeah. then we went out to dinner that night. And he was just like, he was just the nicest guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Nick was a was a was a blast to work with. Oh, I, I can imagine. He just seems so like so intuitive. And, yeah, you know, and he's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he, look, he's an eccentric dude, but yeah. it's but it's it's in terms of just his his normal demeanor, he's he's a absolute pro. Shows up on time, shows up prepared every day. Is nice to everyone. Yeah. Uh, never a moment of drama. You know what I mean? Nick yeah. is like. He, you just wish every actor could be as awesome as Nick to work with. And and uh, how about Robert De Niro with like War with Grandpa? Was that fun too? Were you like? Yeah, oh yeah, God. I mean, you know, yeah. Robert De Niro is, yeah. you know, the you know, 
the icon of icons, right? Especially being an actor myself, you yeah. know what I mean? There's nobody that we all looked up to, look up to more than Robert De Niro, so yeah. that was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's why I, I could imagine being like, uh, a little, was it intimidating or no? You know it is for the first you know few minutes kind yeah. of thing. You know what I mean. The funny thing is, is is Nick, Nick is probably the like the least intimidating because he's just a very disarming guy. You know he, yeah. when you first he first comes in, he comes in and he's got all these rings on and he's got this <laughs> long Indian sweater thing down to his knees and he's it's kind of like here comes Nick Cage, right? right. And it's a it's a you know that's a little intimidating just because he kind of comes in like a force of nature. Yeah. But that's like the Nick Cage persona. Yeah. And then. Right after that, he's kind of like becomes just Nick, right? And he's he's more interested in you than he is in himself. And he's yeah. telling you stories, and he's asking you questions, and and he's so personable, and he's so kind that he, you know what I mean. That you get over it really fast with Nick. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? yeah. And yeah. did you guys bond over comic books and stuff too, or uh, not? He really? bonded over all sorts of stuff. You know, he's he's a funny dude. Yeah. And uh, so we were just telling lots of stories and. And it was funny because, you know, he's really good friends with Charlie Sheen and Charlie Sheen was sending him these funny videos and <laughs> and uh, that he's making around the house. And yeah. um, so, you know, it, it just he's just a fun, a, a really easygoing, fun dude. So we, yeah. we, we kind of we kind of gassed and bonded over all different things every day. There was yeah. always something new. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Oh, we appreciate pleasure. it so much. It was awesome talking course, to you and meeting yeah. you in person. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you awesome. so much. My pleasure, man. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That was really a good interview. Yeah, I. it was It was a lot got, of fun. We got a regular uh, <laughs> Anderson Cooper over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it was so cool to just chat with Grant Kramer. I, I was definitely nerded out a little bit. Um, but... Uh, what a cool guy. Very nice and very, very nice. welcoming and uh, just such a cool dude. I don't know like what else to say about him uh, except if you get a chance to meet him, go meet him. Now, I do have to bring up the next interview, which another great person that you got to talk to. Uh, do you want to set it up? Yeah, I was like a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've been... Watching Suzanne Snyder on my screen for a long time, <laughs> yeah. so being a Killer Clowns fan, it was um, Night of the Creeps. And yeah, Weird Science was a big so one. So many things, yeah. and um, she's just such a amazing person to talk to. Um, very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you could tell she really likes meeting her fans, and uh, she was gracious enough to sit down and, and do an interview with us. And um, let's just get into it. Yeah. Hi, this is Chris Conforti with Fourth Cut Productions, and I'm here with Suzanne Snyder. Hi. And uh, we're here at Creature Feature. How are you liking it so far? Oh, um, it's great. I mean, it's nice people. Um, being with some of my closest friends, getting to travel for the weekend, explore Gettysburg, which is very cool. Yeah, I, I, I've been coming to Gettysburg, I think, since I've been, like, a little little guy so oh, really? <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a fun place to be um, yeah. and having a horror convention here is just a it's a great thing like we love coming here now you are one of our favorite screen queens I mean you're in terror clowns from outer state uh, out of space we got return of the living dead 2 night of the creeps how does it feel to be a part of all these classic films um, you know it's I was talking about this yesterday you get a film and you want to work as an actor when you're younger and you never know what's going to happen. My agent at the time did say that Killer Clowns was going to be a cult classic. She knew. She was like, these guys are so talented. I know, I know this is going to be a cult classic, right? And the script was really funny and the cast was really great and so were the Kieros, so it was very cool. It's, um, you know, it's kind of surprising, right? You don't know if when you do a film if it's even going to come out, right? And then sometimes they come out and they're, they're flops. Sometimes the timing's off and then they're better later on. And this is just kind of one of those films that just has a life of its own, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're getting games soon that we're yeah, excited about. there's um, games and then... Um, that whole line of, like, Spirit Halloween, so it's... It's starting to get to that point where 
it's kind of starting to cross from a cult classic into a pop culture classic. We got the shorty animatronics. Oh, I didn't even think about it's, that. It's everywhere. Yeah, I did another horror film called Retribution, and um, it never came out. And then during COVID, um, some students found it. And it ended up being in a film festival. And then it got, you know, the DVD came out, and they did the whole interviews of all of us. Mm -hmm. And now people are walking up to me talking about retribution, too. So it's, I mean, it's, it's fun, <laughs> right? I mean, it's fun. And I think that people, unless you go to a horror, weekend like a, a convention weekend everybody might that doesn't go might be like oh these people are weird but they are the nicest people at horror conventions and they're multi-generational too so it's like I was just with someone just the grandma she had her daughter watch it now the grandma and the daughter have their daughter and son watching it and they all love it and they tell these stories like every Thanksgiving we do this or I had this one dad and son come and the dad started to cry the son had cancer and he was in the hospital and they thought he was gonna die and they started watching killer clowns from outer space and it made them laugh Aww. and he's well Aww, that's and so they came to to thank me I was just like, you know, I Jeez, mean, I'm... yeah, yeah that's so, emotional. So you don't, <laughs> that's emotional. You just don't. It's just been awesome. It's just been, you know, they talk about awe right now, right? There's a book out on awe, mm -hmm. and um, you can experience it in a lot of different ways. And coming to the conventions and meeting some of these people, you know, gives you the goosebumps and makes you feel so good that you. That you did this, like I don't know, silly or good performance in a movie that disappeared and then reemerged. Reemerged, yeah. Do you have a favorite memory of shooting Killer Clowns? There were a lot of cool memories. I talk about one a lot because the shower scene in Killer Clowns. There was a lot of different moving parts. And I remember just being in there a little nervous because you're doing a shower scene. But um, I mean, I don't show anything, but you're still nervous about it, right? And there are all these different things going on, right? With all these different puppets. And they just took their time and they explained everything to me and they showed me how everything was going to work. And um, it was just a really cool memory where I learned a lot and I felt really well taken care of by the Kyotos and the crew. So, and then the balloons was really funny because I kept on falling and they kept losing me. So they're like, hold on to Suzanne because she's going under the balloons. <laughs> so that was kind of fun too. So I asked the Kyoto's this question <laughs> before. It seems like the consensus for the internet is that Shorty is the best of the clowns. Do you have a favorite clown? I do like Shorty, um, but my favorite scene with the clown mm -hmm is the shadow puppet scene. Oh yeah, that, that scene's awesome. I love the shadow puppets. I just think they're so cool. Yeah, that's my favorite scene so with clowns. You started your career by first modeling. How did you get into acting? Um, an age, I was going to school in mm -hmm. Chicago and an agent came on like a, a talent search mm -hmm. and he, uh, flew me out to LA to audition for some parts, and I got them. But I did do a small part in Chicago. I was in class with Jacqueline Bissett and Rob Lowe and Andrew McCarthy and John Cusack and, and gosh, oh, wow. Lolita Davidovich a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was a little small part. Um, so what's been your favorite part of Creature Features so far? I know we're partial to the live commentary. That was just amazing. <laughs> so the live commentary is really fun, and then um, and then also just sitting there and talking about the movie when people were asking us questions. But the live commentary was really fun. That was. It was fun to see the movie on a big screen again. I hadn't seen that, and it was amazing how well it held up. Yeah, that was That's what we were thinking about. It's the practical um, special effects, I think. It almost seemed like, and I've never seen it on the big screen, 
but it almost seemed like the movie should be viewed on the big screen. There was so much there that really everybody was getting I so agree. involved with. I agree. I think on the big screen it's even better. Uh, Definitely. So our final question, we've yeah. been asking everybody this one. <laughs> it's okay if you can't pick one, you can pick the top three. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Huh. I don't like horror movies. They scare me. I'm a big chicken. So I'm the type of person you don't want to sit next to because I'll scream or jump. Um, but I'm going to pick Killer Clowns and Return of the Living Dead, of course. Okay. Oh, and Night of the Creeps. <laughs> Just because right. I have good memories. All right, we're with Suzanne Snyder at Creature Feature. Thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.